it off, but as I get up into these higher regions and my dynamic range gets smaller, what am I doing? Going back to being linear. I'm going back to being linear, which is what your ear does. That's cool. Okay? So for me, and this is really cool because if I can just cut it off here and I keep going, well, guess what happens in loud environments? The person may not be able to hear. Here I'm giving them an opportunity because now I'm increasing the spectral temporal envelope. Okay? So this looks pretty, pretty cool. Let's look at another graph. Output versus frequency. Okay? So what this is, this isn't, this isn't output. Here's my 85 dB curve, or sorry, my 90 dB curve, 65 dB curve, and my 40 dB curve. I don't know why it's so gross. And here's my audiometric threshold. Bless you. Okay? If I change this to gain, what did output versus frequency, aided gain versus frequency, this is what I get. This is the amount of gain that I'm going to get. And when you do your real year, your carrot, that's what you're going to look at in here. Okay? So this device is where? At about 1800 hertz, which is why you do the real year unaided gain. Because if I do the real year unaided gain, okay, let, me, let me go back and do this. You haven't done this yet, but I'll show you since we're here. Was it session start? Oh, hell. You didn't record that, did you? <coughs> Probably so. You should ask. Like, oh, audiometry. There it is. Okay. So if I go in here and change this, right? And let's say that, uh, and I'm going to go in and say individual numbers. Okay. So they're down here now. I'm going to have them the same, just for my purposes. Usually you'll see you'll see here. Why can't I move it? What's happening? Oh, well, yeah. Oh, it did go up. It's just really slow. Okay, sorry, guys. I didn't know that. <laughs> so this is typically somewhere around 9. This is typically somewhere around 6 or 7. Let's make it 7 because it's a male. This is typically about 2 or 3. So it kind of looks like this. Oh, that's right, I, I gave it a little bit more. That's fine. You usually have about 16 or 18 to be a gain here. That 12 is fine, and this is usually about 8. Okay? Uh, uh, yeah. Is this like the fine-tuning? No. So I, all, I, all I'm doing is I'm, I'm taking the ear canal resonance from my real ear system and putting it in your ear. Okay? okay? So now watch what happens to my fine-tuning. Yes. Okay, and I want to go back and look at my gain. I did it this way, right? Look at that. It moved to this peak. This got higher. Is this like saying that where is it hitting like the UCL at that frequency? UC, UCL is way up here. Okay. Okay. And this is in a 2cc coupler. If I do it in situ, it looks a lot better. What is the orange? Isn't that the limit of the device? Yep. Yeah. That's okay. the limit of the device. Yep. Okay, so that's what we have here. So now I've got NAL and L2 in, okay? Notice you didn't do a whole lot of math because it's doing it for you, okay? But you do have control over the compression. Here's my compression ratio one. Here's my compression ratio two. Here's my knee point one. Here's my knee point two. So these two guys go together and these two guys go together. So let's go back and look. Uh, what did we do? Input, out, was it this? No. The top one. That one. Okay. So watch this. If I go in here and at 500 hertz, which is the red. black, red. red. It's this bottom one. Watch what happens if I reduce the number. Look at this curve. It moves back. Oh. What's happening to gain? Is it going up or down? It's going up. So as I reduce my knee point, you'll do this in amp two. As I reduce my knee point, gain goes up. If I increase my knee point, what happens? Gain goes, yeah. 
And look at this, I'm going to increase it. Gain's going down. Okay, it's backwards. So you have to think the opposite way, okay? So if <clears throat> KD comes in and KD is my patient and KD says, you know what? I absolutely loathe the refrigerator sound, the zzzz sound, right? The humming sound, low frequency. What can I do to eliminate the gain in that region for her? I can do it two ways. I can do it this way, or I can pull gain down. Interesting. Okay? I don't ever touch gain. The only thing I touch is compression. For that frequency. That's... Yeah. So I'm going to go into 500 hertz, and am I going to increase the knee point or decrease the knee point? Increase So I'm going to increase it, and by increasing it, let's say i got to get past this 20, Katie now doesn't hear that refrigerator noise and I didn't do anything to gain, it's automatically gonna change the gain for me. The only time you're gonna change gain is when you do real year. Which are they, they're Sorry. both They're both gain on, on both axes, axes, right? So this is output, this output. is input. Okay. Okay. Then the difference is the gain. Okay. Okay. So instead of the knee point being like down here, it's where up. it was, now it's up here. You got it. And because of that, I've now shifted the tilt on my device, okay? So now I've got a second knee point, right? So as I move this up to 47, which is now somewhere right here, right? There's 47, right? Mm -hmm. Now what happens? Now what's gonna happen? What's gonna happen right here? Only that little bit's getting converted. Really okay, good. so what do I need to do to it? Can, can, I, click, can I click it? Does it let me click it? That's what I don't know here. This computer is as slow as molasses. Yeah, that's, so that's like a really small range of intensities that are getting compressed, right? 12 dB, okay? You'll learn this in AMP 2. So we'll get into this heavy, heavy, heavy. In AMP 2, the difference between these two, there's a formula. You calculate that formula, and it will tell you how much of a difference you need. I'm guessing, off the top of my head, I need about 14, 16 dB, something like that. But I can't seem to change. It won't. And see, this is what, this is what drives me crazy. Binaural adjustment is turned on. Okay, beautiful. It's changing both of them. How do I change that guy? Can I drag it? I can't change it. It won't let me. So the only thing that this is going to let me change is my low frequency knee point. The manufacturer's not letting me do that. So when we were in school, we had to fit all of these things. When now that you guys are here, for whatever reason, they don't trust you guys. And so that's where you, you have um, issues. So in this particular case, you don't want to hear that low frequency gain, but I can't just give you this. That's not going to be enough. Right? So what I'm gonna do is, can I, it's not gonna let me do it, okay. I don't wanna do all of them. I'm just gonna do this guy. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cheat. I'm gonna go here, so I got a nice stem, and I'm going to go to gain versus frequency. Gain versus aided gain, insertion gain. Yeah, okay, aided gain, let's do aided gain. In situ, right, in the ear. And I can now go in, and in the low frequencies here, is it moving? Anything moving? Do you see anything moving? No. Mm -hmm. I thought it was just my eyes. Gotta blow this up. Y'all see anything? No. no nothing's been okay. So what I might then do is because I don't, that knee point is critical, I might just go in and now reduce the gain in that small channel. Okay? So again, these are the things that you would do before the patient comes in because you're going to set this thing based on some of the measurements that you're going to predetermine. Okay? So let's now assume that all this is fit well. Okay? I can go to acclimatization. 
Okay, and I have it at four, first time where Climatization is active. It is active, and I'm going to turn it down. It's going to reduce the gain. Okay, and it can what it can do is it can automatically increase the gain for the patient. Okay, so I might say, I'm going to, every three weeks or every two weeks, it's automatically going to go from one level to the next level to the next level to the next. So two, four, six weeks, you're now fully acclimatized. Okay, so that's the same thing that Dr. Davis does. Yeah. It, it automatically adjusts over like right. the two weeks that he sees him for the following. Right. Which is why he doesn't set it to 100% gain right. the first time. And we're not at 100% here either. Okay. Okay? So here's my question to you. I had this conversation just this morning. Would you rather the hearing aid do this or would you rather the patient come back and you do it? And it's an open question. So I'm trying to get your sense and your thoughts on this. Well, if you're wanting people to buy your services and not just the hearing aid, you would want me to do it. Like, I would want to do it because then they're using me, not using this, mm -hmm. the hearing aid. Well, like you said, then you can get feedback on, like, what the spectral temporal envelope is like, like how they're actually hearing, right. not just how loud it is. And I feel like that will reduce returns so that they can... And y'all are the smartest group I've had. That's right. And if you're in touch with the patient, that makes it very, very simple. Okay? So, here's the thought, and it's a thought. The thought is, is that audiology will eventually move to something like the dental model. Okay? So, you go to the dentist. Does the dentist come out and see you from the very, very beginning? No. Who sees you? Assistant. An assistant, or you typically have a hygienist, <coughs> right? That person takes your x-rays, your case history, they're going to put you in the chair, they're going to clean out your teeth, they're going to take all that stuff, right? The stuff that everybody hates. At least I hate it, okay? Then, what happens? Dennis sees you for like five minutes and says, yeah, everything's good. Yeah, they tap around a little bit. Okay. Yeah. They're like, oh, they did a good job. Okay, so, so, so Sean is the audiologist. Sean is the assistant, and I walk over and say, you know what? That's a standard audiometric threshold. It, uh, I've got my acoustic reflexes lined up, my word rec lines up. You know what? I'm not going to waste my time here. I'm going to move on to something else, mm -hmm. okay? Should you fit the hearing aid or should I fit the hearing aid? That's the, that's the next question before, as, before I leave. Me, because you have the expertise about yeah, to interpret your the results. That's exactly right. Okay? But do I want to fit them now or do I want to have them come back? That's the next question. You have You'd have to order the hearing yeah, so, come so back. they would come back after you already programmed it. Yeah. And then you would have it ready for them when they came back. Perfect. Yeah. So now you're going to say, hey, you know, we're interested in these hearing 16 aids. 16 days. 16, 16 days. days, right. So now, because I'm not doing all the audiometric testing, what can I do with the patient? Counsel. Counsel. So you've got somebody else doing the leg work, right? And, and don't, don't get me wrong, it's important that you get all the right thresholds. But now you're doing the most important thing, and that's counseling the patient and talking about features and so forth and so on, right? How these devices are going to work. You, uh, you order the device, you're going to schedule them 16 days out, they're going to come back in. Before they come back in, you're going to do all this programming, okay? When they come in, who's going to fit them with the device? You already fit it so the assistant could technically give it to them, I guess, and then you could come counsel them or something. So what some folks are doing is they will do like, like when you get... Um, when you get uh, uh, what they call the no-line braces. There's a word term for yeah. Invisalign, okay? When you get the no-line braces, typically it's the assistant that helps you put those things in initially, okay? Then what happens? Orthodontist comes over and tells you what to expect, what to do. And if they need to file down your teeth, that's when all the filing... So basically, what they've done is they've reduced all the anxiety in the room because you're anxious to get your things. It's like a kid in a candy store. I got the candy... I can taste it. I know it's pretty good. Okay, now I know I only get three pieces of candy. I got to be judicious in what I pick and so forth and so on. That's the model that audiology is considering as a group moving to. And uh, I like the model personally. I think it, uh, I think it uh, would do a lot of good, particularly for, for the adult population. You can't do that.